After a Week 10 loss to the Arizona Cardinals, it is a new low in the Sean McVay era. Where do you go from here? That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. You are Locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Rams your first listen every single day, free and available wherever you get your podcast. part of the Locked On Podcast Network. My name is Travis Rogers. You can see it right there on your screen. If you're checking us out on our Locked On Rams YouTube page, which you should also be subscribed to. And while we're here, why don't you go ahead and click that subscribe button on your podcast feed so you get your Rams content each and every day. Not only do I host this Rams podcast, but I also host the Rams pre-half and post-game show on their flagship station, ESPN 710. Also host the Travis and Sliwa show, 10A to 1P, every single weekday on that very same 710 ESPN. We get started about two hours before each game. So if you are in and around Los Angeles and want to listen to the Rams pregame show two hours before kickoff, myself and Kirk Morrison. Today's episode of Locked on Rams is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projections, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. It has been a rough season for the Rams so far this year. Uh, three and six after the latest loss to the Arizona Cardinals. We'll get into that. Uh, here's my first question for you, and this is coming up in just a little bit. How many wins is this team going to find? How many chances, uh, or should say, how many opportunities do they really have to win in their final eight games? It's not zero, but it may be a lot closer to zero than anybody would have ever thought at this point in the season. Uh, also, we'll talk about Cooper Cup's injury, what that may mean for this team, what it may mean for the offense uh, if he is, in fact, not able to play for a period of time, which feels like it's uh, certainly possible, if not likely. Um, that's coming up in just a little And believe it or not, it may not impact the team all that much. Not that he's not a great player, but I'll explain that coming up in just a little bit. But let's start right here. Let's start with what we saw yesterday. Let's start with... Um, what the team looks like through the first nine weeks of the season. They are three and six. They just lost by 10 points to a bad Arizona team who was playing a backup quarterback. And by the way, that was a 17-point loss. I know that they scored a touchdown at the end there. Van Jefferson got in the end zone for the first time this season. Good for him, I, and I mean that sincerely. Uh, but this was not a competitive game. This was a game that Arizona more or less had the palm in their hand for virtually the entire day. Uh, both teams playing backup quarterbacks, John Wolford in for the Rams, Colt McCoy in for the Arizona Cardinals. And a couple of different things were jarring. Number one, um, while John Wolford is a cool story, while, you know, he's went to Wake Forest, he played in the AAF and he kind of caught Sean McVay's eye in training camp and he's been in the backup for the last couple of years. Um, there's not much there. There's not much there that makes you go, no, we can go out and win a, a game if we need to with John Wolford. Look at the difference between what he brought to this team and look at what Colt McCoy brought to his. Colt McCoy was not pushing the ball downfield and lighting it up and, and looking like the second coming of Joe Montana, but he looked like an NFL quarterback. He looked like a guy that had played in this league for a very long time, that had started a lot of games uh, in this league for a long time, that threw accurately and on time and with anticipation. And I think that was the biggest um, differentiation between those two guys. John Wolford's got a little speed. John Wolford's got some um, athleticism. John Wolford's got a little spark, or at least I think that's what people were hoping to see. But he wasn't accurate. He did not throw with anticipation. The biggest difference between what McCoy did yesterday and what Wolford did yesterday was McCoy would take the snap, he'd look down the field, he'd make a decision, and he'd let it rip. John Wolford would take the snap, he'd look down the field, he'd make a decision, and then wait to make sure that he made the right decision, wait for that receiver to come out of his break, and then try to let it rip. And by then, it's way too late. And, and it's it's just a function of not having played a, a great deal of NFL football, but it was very obvious that he had not played much NFL football. 
um, the Rams may need to, moving forward, make a different sort of determination on who's going to be their backup quarterback. Either go for something very, very different like a Bryce Perkins or something much more similar to Matt because this halfway in between both really did not uh, seem to work very well. So that was the quarterback situation, and that was – you know, about halfway through the first quarter, you're like, yeah, this is this this feels a lot like what we've seen before. Um, which brings us to this. This is the lowest point that a Sean McVay team has been in his tenure. And and I'm not just talking about record because we've been there for a while now, but that that performance yesterday was a game that made you feel like this is not going to never mind change. Rams are not going to make the playoffs. Not not at three and six. Uh, not with the schedule that they have remaining, and just for more than any of those other reasons, just the way that they've played. They haven't played well. Um, it happens. You have a bad year occasionally. This is the NFL. That's not unprecedented. What is alarming and what is um, disappointing, I think, for people like myself, and I know a lot of Rams fans fall into the same category as well, is I thought Sean McVay would become more innovative, more creative, more um, – just more McVay, for lack of a better word, uh, when faced with these sorts of challenges. What he's become is terribly predictable. And, and and this is a guy that showed up in the league with an incredible amount of energy, an incredible amount of innovation, and somebody that, you know, remember when we talked about how, oh, has he broke the NFL? Has he solved it? Or is, he gonna, is this going to be a league where everybody scores 50 points a game? They can't get to 14 most days. And it's because they're doing the same thing every single week with no matter whether it's Matthew Stafford or John Wolford or Cooper Cup or whoever it may be, the list of running backs that we've gone through ad nauseum over the last uh, few weeks. This is a team that runs the ball on first down, throws a short pass on second down, shows a throw, throws a short pass on third down and kicks it away. Wash, rinse, and repeat. Because here's what happened. They get the ball to open the game. They drive the field, you know, just short of 60 yards, 14 plays, kick a field goal, and they did it by mostly running the ball on the ground. They did it with a host of different people. They did it with Henderson. You did it with Akers that Powell got the ball. Wolford ran with the ball. Bryce Perkins ran with the ball. They, they short passes. This they They had some success on the ground. Now, it wasn't the second coming of Saquon Barkley, but they had some success on the ground and then they get the ball back the second time and they went right back to what they've been doing all season long. Run on first down for Notre Dame, two passes done, we're out of here. Run on first down, two short passes done, we're out of here. There was no innovation. There was no trick plays. There was no let's mix it up. There was no wildcat. There was no anything that made you feel like it was anything other than let's just try to get this out of his hands as quickly as possible. Let's just run the same thing so terribly predictable. And that's something that I never thought I would say about Sean McVay. I, I'm okay with predictability if it's working. If they know that you're going to go up and, and tear them apart with these 10 or 12 plays, great. But it's not working. This is the second month of doing the same thing and expecting a different result. It does not make any sense. For somebody that has been so good at figuring out how this league works, this season has not happened at all. I understand that they're wiped out with injuries. I understand that they were playing a backup quarterback. But to have that kind of performance in a game that really, you know, I, I think the season was probably over from a playoff perspective anyway. But if you wanted to trick yourself at all, you had to win that game against Arizona yesterday. And that is what they came up with. Very, very disappointing. Very, very disappointing indeed. And how? It may have gotten actually worse. Cooper Cup, what does that injury mean if he's back? What does it mean if he's not? Where do you go from here? That's next on Locked on Rams. Now a word from Total Wine and more. The holidays are right around the corner, and you're always looking for that perfect gift. And going into Total Wine and more and finding that just perfect bottle of something is a great way to do it. With so many bottles to choose from, it's easy to find new favorite single barrel bourbons or the perfect gifts for everyone on your list with some help of a friendly guide. And with all the confidence of knowing that you found something special for the lowest price, find what you love, love what you find. Only a Total Wine and more. Curbside pickup delivery is available in most areas. Visit TotalWine.com to learn more. Spirits not sold in Virginia and North Carolina. Drink responsibly. B21. Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out the Locked on Sports Today podcast from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked on can provide. Locked on Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. 
Thanks again for making Locked on Rams your first listen. My name is Travis Rogers. Um, Cooper Cup goes down in the second half yesterday. And of all of the things on the offense that have not worked this season, the only thing that really kind of has to this point uh, has been Cooper Cup. He's continued to look a lot like the guy that we've seen since he's come into the league. He's a guy that has been incredibly effective, incredibly smart, and he went down yesterday. Uh, Sean McVay said it didn't look good. It didn't sound good. And then he went on to say is my understanding is he's going to have some tests today and MRI and some other tests just to ascertain how much damage there actually is. It does seem though, just talking to people involved in the situation that he did avoid the worst case scenario. So it doesn't seem that there's a fracture in there. There might be no fracture. It seems to be where it stands right now, but that does not mean it's best case scenario either. So looking at the next couple of weeks for Cooper Cup, you might certainly see him miss some time when you're talking about the Los Angeles Rams. They need him. They need everyone. Uh, it has been a tough, tough season. Seems like they're going to be without Cooper Cup for the next little bit here. More info coming out today. Um, that was Ian Rappaport. Um, okay, so when you hear it's not worst case scenario, but it's definitely not best case scenario, that means he's going to miss some time. You know, it's an ankle injury. Whether he gets the designation of the high ankle sprain, right? That's always the one that you go, oh boy. Uh, here's the reality of it: they're losing games with him. They're going to lose games without him. I don't think that this changes anything all that much from a results perspective. It, it may affect your fantasy team. It may affect uh, the Rams' inability to score, but they weren't scoring anyway. They're, they're averaging about 16 points a game. They got 17 yesterday. Um, Cooper Cup had nothing to do with the, the win or the loss yesterday, I should say. Uh, he had a negative three yards total day, uh, or excuse me, negative one on three catches. It has been a disaster, and this just adds to it. This has been a season that has been a lost season, and now you got to really start to make some hard decisions about what you're going to do moving forward because the fact of the matter is you're not going to win games with him. Uh, you might as well lose games without him and triple, quadruple uh, check that he's 100% ready to go. I know he wants to play. I know that he is a tough guy. I know that this is the – you know, the, the mentality of an NFL football player is as long as I can play, I'm going to play. Everybody's hurt at this time of year. And you don't worry about what's coming up next. You worry about what's coming up uh, in front of you that very day. This team is going nowhere this year. The last thing you want to do is burn any more tread off the tires from your best players. And that, of course, would include Cooper Cup. Be cautious. Be very cautious about what you're doing. And quite frankly, it may put some pressure on these other guys to really start to step up or all of a sudden some decisions that seemed like you would never have to make some, some players that felt like their positions were relatively secure all of a sudden are going to get a, a, a really good look because you could make the argument that if Cooper cup is out on the field and the ball is going to him as frequently as it was, well, I'm not even getting a chance to really showcase what it is that I do. It's got to go to cup, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. I don't know if I'd buy that, but I can listen to it. If you're Tyler Higby and you still can't get it done, now what are we talking about? If you're Van Jefferson and you still can't get it done, now what are we talking about? Allen Robinson, my goodness. You know, another day, non-factor. He had five catches and it wasn't, you know, go ahead and name one that changed the game. It, it really wasn't one out there. Um, if he can't get it done without Cooper Cup out there, what are we talking about? And I'm not saying they're going to cut all of these guys. I'm not saying that everybody has a gun to their head at this point right now as far as their job security goes. But at some point, you're going to have to make sure that you are valuable to this team because somebody's got to catch the ball. This is like a bad NBA team, right? That Think about the worst NBA team you think of. That team's still going to score 100 points a night. Who scores them? The team's still bad, but somebody's got to get the points. Somebody's got to get the buckets. That's what this team is. The, the Rams are going to play eight more games. They may play them with John Wolford. They may not play them with uh, Cooper Cup. Maybe Matthew Stafford comes back sooner than later. We'll see. But they're going to be out there. And this is one of these things that while maybe you're not playing for a postseason berth, you're potentially playing for your job next season, whether it's here or whether it's somewhere else. Because if the Rams decide to move on, everybody else is going to go back and look at the film from these games. And if they can't get anything going, if Sean McVay can't get these guys going, if they can't get themselves going, 
What are we talking about here? This is a really important time for all of these players on this Rams team to show what they can do. They're not going to rip off seven wins in their last eight games and sneak into the playoffs. It's not going to happen. If it does, great. I'll be love. I'll love to be wrong about that one. But there hasn't been a single moment where it starts to look like this team is getting better, which brings us to our next point. How many games is this team going to win? Eight left. They have three so far. What's the magic number? That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. Have you tried prize picks yet? It is a great way to do daily fantasy during the weekends when you're watching these games, during the week when you're watching these games as well. Here's how you do it. You go put the prize picks app on your phone. Go to prizepicks.com and go find the one that you like the most. Do you like that Patrick Mahomes more or less than 300 yards? Do you like that maybe Cooper Cup gets into the end zone or not? Do you like Derrick Henry more than a, uh, 100 yards in a game? That's what prize picks is all about. You don't just look at the one pick and you decide, yeah, I'm going to go a little bit more or a little bit less than that. Pick two to five players. If they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times the money on your entry. You're not competing against a bunch of other people. It's just you against the projections available. And they got every sport. They got football, basketball, baseball, hockey, golf, you name it. It's on there. Entries can be made in about 60 seconds or less. It is super easy. Download the prize picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users receive a 100% instant deposit matchup to $100 with the promo code locked on. And if you deposit $100, bucks, prize picks will give you $100. Bucks. If you put in $50, they are going to give you $50. So don't forget to enter that promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. All right, so here's where it gets real. And the Rams season is probably a wash, right? The Rams, there are three and six. There's eight games to go. You look around the rest of the NFC and... Uh, they're in 12th place out of 15 teams. There's only three teams worse than them. The Detroit Lions are ahead of the Rams as we sit here um, towards the end of week 10. So how many games is this team going to win? They've lost three in a row. They've lost four of their last five. They've lost five of their last six. They're in a really bad way. Cooper Cup is down. Matthew Stafford just missed a game. The offensive line has been beaten up. And the, the creativity and spark and innovation that you need to win games appears to be nowhere. So with eight games remaining, could this be a five-win team? Are there two wins on the rest of the schedule? And and let's just look at what they have coming up. They got the Saints next week on Sunday, uh, and the Saints are one of the few teams that are behind the Rams in the NFC. So let's be generous and give them that Saints win. Okay, that gets you to four. Um, By the way, that's pretty generous. The Chiefs in Kansas City, they're going to lose that game. So we're stuck on four. The Seahawks back at SoFi Stadium. I know that the Rams do really well against uh, the Seahawks. I know that that's a uh, historically a pretty favorable matchup for them. Weren't we saying the same thing about the Cardinals just a couple of days ago? That's an L. The Raiders, okay? Yeah, I think they'll beat the Raiders. But here's the rub. It's a short week. And there's going to be a million Raider fans in that building. That's the Thursday night game on December 8th. And the Raiders will have their fans. The Raiders are a terrible team. Don't get me wrong. But the Rams aren't much better. Let's give it to the Raiders. Okay, that brings us up to five wins. The Broncos on Christmas Day. Who knows, right? That, that's, that, that was a game that looked like it was going to be kind of fun on Christmas. And now that's two bad teams playing again. At the Chargers. Chargers are a better football team than the Rams right now. And then you're up in Seattle to end the season. That's five win team. That's a five and 12 season. And while there's no guarantee that that's how this is going to play out, uh, that feels about right. Here's the thing. What feels more likely? 5-12, and 12, which I just laid out, or something along the lines of 7-10, and 10, which they could get to, but a lot of things would have to break your way. Or could they lose every game the rest of the way? I don't think you can lose to uh, every single team. New Orleans might be the 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 – most winnable game on your schedule, and that's in New Orleans. Maybe it's that game against the uh, Denver Broncos on Christmas, but my goodness. And, oh, by the way, the Detroit Lions have the, their pick. The Rams could end up picking in the top four or five picks in the entire draft, and Detroit gets that pick. Boy, oh, boy, how things change. That bill for going all in, 
Uh, it got expensive, and it showed up a little bit earlier than I think everybody would have thought. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Rams. We'll give you an update on Cooper Cup's injury when we get back at it tomorrow. Thanks for making us your first listen. Now, for your second listen, check out the Locked on Sports Today pod. Biggest stories of the day, instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time, whose house? It's Locked on Rams' house.